Okay, displacement time graph to velocity time graph. Uh, this one they want us to change from displacement time graph to uh, velocity time graph. Which of the following velocity time graph best represent the motion in the graph above? Okay, if they give you a displacement time graph and then they want you to change this to velocity time graph. Uh, so what you do is from the velocity time graph, you try to find the uh, from the displacement time graph, you try to find the velocity. And if you still remember, the velocity is equal to the gradient. Eh? So we find the gradient. Uh, here, the gradient is 0. Uh, okay, from here to here, gradient is 0. Okay. Uh, from 0 to 4 seconds, the, <coughs> the gradient is equal to uh, 15 over 4. Eh? 15 over 4, which is equal to 3.75. Okay, so that is the speed, uh, 3.75 meter per second. And then for the last four seconds, the gradient is equal to negative 10 over 4, negative 10 over 4, which is equal to negative 2.5 meter per second. Okay, it's negative is because uh, it go down uh, from 15 to 5, uh, so decrease by 10, negative 10. Uh, okay, and the time is uh, 4 seconds. Okay. So after we get uh, the speed, uh, 3.75, then 0 and negative 2.75. Uh, so, so from 0 to 4, uh, 0 to 4, the velocity is 3.75. Uh, and then 4 to 8, the velocity is 0. 4 to 8, the velocity is 0. And uh, 8 to 12, the velocity negative 2.5. Okay, 8 to 12, the velocity negative 2.5. Okay. So then this is the answer. Okay? This is the answer. Answer is B. Okay? Steven asked why divided by 4? Because the gradient is equal to the height divided by the width. The height is 15, the width is 4. So 15 divided by 4. Gradient is equal to the height, delta y over delta x. Huh? or the change of the vertical axis divided by the change of the horizontal axis.